welcome to this very special edition of A Power of One. We already know the extent of the depth of the relationship between the world's two largest democracies. But there's another dimension that perhaps doesn't get reflected that often, which is the presence of a very large number of Indians or those of Indian origin in the current Obama administration. And in the countdown to that big visit in November, I am very, very pleased uh, to be joined by two key members of Team Obama of the current administration. My first guest tonight is Farah Pandit, who's uh, the US government's special representative to the Muslims. She joins us here in Mumbai. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. For being uh, part of the show. Uh, famously known to have taken on the toughest job in the world. Uh, that was about a year ago. Has it become tougher or easier? You know, it's been a really remarkable uh, year. I was sworn in uh, in September of last year, and I've been to 25 countries in the last 10 months. Um, everywhere from Brazil to a Mauritania to a Norway to an Indonesia um, to talk to Muslims on a people-to-people -people level. And what I'm finding is that there is tremendous interest in how this president has chosen to engage with Muslims. And when you think about the fact that this is a historic moment in time, um, President Obama, on his very first day of office, spoke to the world in his inauguration address and talked about his commitment to engage with Muslims. And he said that right then, on the very first day. That's right. Um, he also, a few months later, spoke in Ankara, Turkey, to the parliament about, again, offering a new beginning to engage with one-fourth of the world's population in new ways. But his speech in Cairo, in which he laid out a vision of engagement uh, based on mutual interest and mutual respect, has been welcomed. One of the uh, other obvious reasons why your job is so tough is that, on one hand, you have what's going on in Iraq right now and Afghanistan uh, with the American presence there. And then there's your sort of hearts and mind initiative. Uh, do you often find the two coming into conflict? The president has been very clear right out of the gate that he was very concerned about what troops moving out of Iraq. Um, he talked about his commitment to the Israel-Palestinian issues. He talked about his commitment to Afghanistan and Pakistan. And in every one of those cases, the president has stepped forward. We have an envoy for Middle East peace. Okay. We have a special representative for Afghanistan and Pakistan. We are working on the closure of Guantanamo Bay. Um, there are things that are happening in the foreign policy arena that have been challenging. But at the same time, while people are working on those 24-7, we have to think about what's happening community to community around the world. Are many of these conversations and discussions that you're having also filtering back and actually impacting the way that America's foreign policy is being shaped? So here, it, it's really interesting because the ideas that I hear on the ground, that I mean, at this point, you know, a year into the job, I've spoken to thousands and thousands and thousands of Muslims, 25 countries, so very diverse. Um, I'm not just going to the capital cities. I'm going way out into places where US government officials haven't gone to get a sense of, of what's taking place and ideas. A couple of things that are really interesting. One, no matter where I go, I mean, people talk about this digital divide, and you can be in the most re remote Africa, and it, you, know, you talk about innovation. Everybody has a cell phone. Everybody has a way to connect to the internet. So they're sharing ideas. A lot of them are on Facebook. A lot of them are on uh, social networking sites like Facebook. So they're wanting to talk peer to peer. We have to help facilitate peer to peer interest and dialogue in how we do things. 